Good afternoon, and welcome to today's webinar on brand values, what does your brand stand for, which is written and presented by Paul Hitchens. But just before I pass you over to Paul, I'd like to highlight a few points. Uh, the webinar today will last for around an hour, and it will include an interactive Q&A session at the end for questions and answers. All delegates will be muted, so the only voices you'll be hearing this afternoon will be mine and Paul's. You can, however, ask your questions throughout the session by simply typing in the questionnaire box located on your screen. We'll then try and answer as many of these as we can at the end of the webinar. And don't forget that a link to the recording of this webinar will be emailed to you within the next couple of days. And members of CIM will also have access to this via the Marketing Expert Toolkit again within the next couple of days. So anyway, I won't take up any more of your time. Over to you, Paul. Thank you, and, and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining me today um, with my uh, webinar on values, what does your brand stand for? Um, I am a CIM course director. I present the, uh, the brand masterclass. I'm also the author of Successful Brand Management and Create the Perfect Brand. Um, today we're going to be focusing on, on values, and it's going to be an interactive session. I've got five questions that I would like to ask you. Um, and so um, please be prepared to, to put uh, your thoughts to the test and, uh, um, and share with us um, the impact that values are making on your organization and your branding. Um, so the, the outline for today is that we're going to be looking at four, four areas. I'm going to introduce the subject and the importance of core values. We're going to look at how they are created. Um, in the third part, we'll be looking at how they're implemented and finally um, how to sustain them. So let's begin. Um, in this section, Introduction to Core Values, I'll be asking why do we need them, uh, what exactly they are, um, value systems, and industry sector and country values. So I'd like to start with a question. Um, first of all, um, are your brand values sincere and memorable? Um, if you strongly agree with that statement, please vote yes, one. Um, if you're indifferent and not so sure, um, please vote three or, or two or four, depending on where you feel. And finally, you know, if you feel that um, brand values are, are not sincere and memorable in your organization, please vote five. So let's, um, let's put that to the test, and we'll have a look now to see um, what, uh, what uh, your, your thoughts are on that statement. So I'll wait a little while as, as you um, make your selections on the votes, and then uh, we'll see if we get some immediate response. Okay, so here we go. So um, excellent. So it, 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 it's uh, it's quite quite varied, really, right across the spectrum here. But uh, in the in the centre, there's really a sort of an indifference. I mean, it's definitely right in the middle. Um, it would appear that the the majority. Um, uh, would, would uh, find that uh, you're not really too sure about the importance of values. So let's see if we can sharpen up your thinking on, on this subject as we progress through um, and ask more questions as we go through the, the, uh, the presentation. Um, because I think values are, are uh, becoming um, a, a very strong action word at the moment. Um, as you monitor news stories, it's incredible how often the word values is thrown up um, and put brought to task as the reason why some brands are failing to deliver. You know, it's been used as a, as a, a panacea of all ills. Uh, quite often we, we see that uh, some industry sectors have a crisis of values. Um, and so I want us to sort of uh, think, you know, uh, uh, um, reframe our thoughts about the importance of values and the, and the essential aspect that they have in defining what your brand is about. So you can see here in my, my diagram that uh, you know, at the heart of everything, we have the core values, which, which um, appeal to your, your customer brand audience. And that, that can include external audiences like your suppliers. Um, you know, they, they build on your reputation, experience, and expectation. But those core values equally are powerful in attracting um, your staff um, and raising levels of engagement. So as an employer brand, you know, they help to retain people that agree strongly with your values. They help build levels of engagement, and they attract people to the organization. And of course, that is going to make an organization more profitable and have a, more, a stronger de depth of loyalty from both audiences. In fact, 
if we look at some of the um, some of the external uh, r ranking indexes that are available to us, and consider Interbrand and Brand Z. Both of these organizations evaluate brands by value. Um, and if we look at their top fives, they're remarkably similar. I mean, in fact, just looking at the news recently, we know that Apple had record profits last year. And so it's not surprising that we find that Apple is, is ranked as the most valuable br global brand at the moment in the interbrand uh, global brand ranking. Um, closely a bit behind, we have G Google in second place, Coca-Cola, and then IBM and Microsoft. And the brand Z rankings are, are, are very similar. But what I find is very interesting, because this could be seen as the, very much the, the customer brand, how do we then measure the, 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 the employer brand, the sort of the internal uh, strength of those brands? Well, I look to LinkedIn and also Universum. U Universum is a, a global employer brand uh, a, a agency that uh, also um, ranks brands according to the strength of their appeal. And LinkedIn, of course, has access to the biggest uh, statistics on, on the global workforce. And they've analyzed the traffic and interest around the world's brands in terms of which brands are most in demand as employers. And it's interesting that Google ranks in first place and that a Apple is in second place. Um, so we see again the, the, that not only are brands um, uh, highly valuable to their, to the, uh, and ranked uh, uh, from their customer appeal, but they, the same brands are coming up as brands that stand for something and appeal to the workforce, to the employees. Uh, and so they're equally attractive uh, and have a strong pull as a place to work. And so this is important. Um, if we remember, um, the, in the words of Steve Jobs, um, he, he stated um, when he returned to the company that he, that he founded and um, really sort of recalibrated what that brand stood for and brought it into the, in, into the successful sort of global brand that it has become today. He said, to me, marketing is about values. This is a very complicated world. It's a very noisy world. And we're not going to get a chance to get people to remember much about us. No company is. And so we have to be really clear on what we want them to know about us. So he made it very, very clear to, to his audience that a brand has to stand for something, that va values are in, incredibly important in, in building that brand. So um, I, I, why, why exactly do, do we need values? You know, they help to, to differentiate an organization. You know, so some brands have been built very clearly on standing for a, a whole collection of, of values that we could, we could term as ethics. Um, you know, the Body Shop and Damon Eater Ruddock um, you know, founded her brand on a very strong ethos. Um, and, and, and we can see here from the packaging on my slide, you know, it's, it's almost a, a medal ribbon of, of, of values that she's standing for um, and uh, quali qualities that appeal not just to the audience but to people that want to work for the organization. Um, so why do we need them? That's the, well, the, the, the factors are that they, are, they increase engagement. You know, when I understand what the brand stands for and the part that I play in the build, building that brand, you know, I'm, I will be more likely to feel engaged with it. You know, the, it and I think this is quite clear. When you're working for an organization and you clearly understand the aims and you believe in those aims yourself, no matter where you are in that organization, it's not such a difficult um, understanding to see where you, the part that you play in, in building and working towards a, a, you know, a greater purpose. And so motivation, motivation so drives us and inspires us, you know, creates more, more likelihood of a, of a conscientious team. You know, we, we, we live in a, a, a rapidly changing world. Um, in the United Kingdom, you know, much of our original manufacturing has now we've, has, has sort of moved towards more of a service-orientated uh, business culture. And so the quality of the people is absolutely paramount. You know, we need to be inspired and conscientious to, to encourage our fellow colleagues, but also because we, we, are, we are the brand, and, and so we are part of the interaction and the brand experience for, for our customers and our suppliers. Um, why do we need values? Differentiation. You know, a clear, clear, clearly held values help to differentiate us from, from our competitors. You know, both customers and employees can discern an ethical differentiator. Um, they add personality to the brand. You know, it helps us to understand what you stand for. 
and so they they attract loyalty. You know, when when you've got something that's so so strong that that is heartfelt, that it is is, is emotional, um, and it creates a uh, uh, a, a, a strong, a, a strong draw, a, a truly d- deep level of loyalty, and so a shared belief attracts loyal customers and employees. It's it's a it's a big quality here, um, and in understanding, um, we have clarity and communication of a clear per- promise. So, of course, in all of this, we need to have a clear message and a lack of confusion. People know, need to know what we're about and what, what, we're, what we really stand for. Communication is, is everything. Um, behavior. All brand communication touch points must be instinctive. You know, it is the brand uh, and its core values create, say, a moral compass, a phrase I'm sure you've, you've heard before. But that framework of the values and the, va- the values having very clear behavior help us to decide what is right or wrong in any given situation. Um, so they help, they help us in, in our working life uh, to, do, to do the right thing. Um, as uh, Dr. Philip Kotler, the, you know, the um, m- m- published uh, author, um, and uh, I- I'm sure many of you are very familiar w- with his work, so y- even the students of, of marketing would be aware of him, um, he said that in a world full of confusion, they, the customer, search for companies that address their deepest needs for social, economic, and environmental justice in their mission, vision, and values. Um, and, and it's very interesting um, in, in his marketing 3.0. You know, it is very va- values orientated. Um, it's about uh, looking towards a future that's built on stand, standing for something, where businesses themselves are, uh, you know, see their part in the world as corporate citizens. And this is this is very important. Um, if we look at uh, millennials, the, the new new generation coming to the workplace, um, evidence suggests from reports by uh, Universum that uh, there's an expectation that not necessarily the governments of the world are going to change the world, but actually the the companies, the big corporates, are going to change the world. And so, for millennials, it is important for their own self-esteem to be attracted to and working for an organisation that's playing playing their part. And so it echoes the words there of, of, of Philip Kotler. Um, I think a, a, big, a big example that many of us will have had some experience of um, would be uh, the, the Disney brand, again, one of the world's most, most valuable brands. But it, uh, it's a brand that um, uses its, its value system as a, as a compass of behavior. Um, it's as if all the employees have a duty of care to, to the memory of, of the founder, Walt, Walt Disney. Um, and it's a much admired system. They, it, the people that work for the organization are known as cast members. And so, you know, they play their part in creating magical moments. And so the, the magic in the brand is really brought to life by the people that work there. And at, at every level throughout the organization in, the, in their resorts, uh, people understand that, uh, you know, they play a very important part in, in, in delivering the brand and making creating those magical moments, those sort of spontaneous moments of magic that sort of go, go beyond the, uh, the description or the expectation uh, and surpass our expectations. Um, so um, what exactly are values and where did it all begin? Um, if we go back to sort of the start of civilization and, and, and Plato, Plato's Republic. In fact, P- Plato's Republic was often translated the title as injustice. Um, and in it is really the, the foundation of, of the values of, of which you know, modern society has been built upon. We have justice, courage, moderation, and practical intelligence. And the great faiths of the world have, have added to these. And of course, the, the law of, of, of law and order has, has built upon these. But here we see the, the, the bedrock of, of, of values. But these, these values become a sort of shared values um, that are necessary um, for, for large cultures. But for us as brands, as organizations, we need to find personality in these values in order to turn them into something that uh, is immediately identifiable as part of that, that brand experience. Um, so wh- what do we mean by values? Well, that values are fundamental beliefs. Um, they're the principles by which we define what is right and just. Um, they provide guidance as we determine right from wrong and good, good versus bad. Um, values really are our standards 
So they create a, a, a guide book, you know, a, a part of our brand, brand canon of, of qualities that we understand w what is on brand or off brand in, through our behavior. Um, if we, if we uh, look at the, the, the famous work of Abraham Maslow and his, his uh, a famous um, hierarchy of needs, um, we, building on the, the physiological th the needs that we, we, we require, safety, love and belonging, belonging of a family, of a community, and building on esteem. At the very top, at the pin pinnacle, we see self-actualization. Um, Maslow said that uh, a musician must make music, an artist must paint, a poet must write, if, if he is to be ultimately at peace with himself. What a man can be, he must be. This need we call self-actualization. Well, for me, self-actualization is, is about engagement, you know, it's about fulfillment, you know, uh, uh, fulfilling that sort of high, high need, feeling um, uh, complete. Um, and, and so a brand can achieve self-actualization through engagement of its employees and through engagement with its suppliers and with its customers. Um, in, in, through industry sector and country values, we, we need um, investors and financial leaders taking values as seriously as valuation, culture as seriously as capital. This was a tweet by Christine Lagarde, um, obviously uh, MD of the International Monetary Fund, uh, tweeted back l last year, uh, 27th of May 2014, um, and, and it was part of uh, you know, a wider talk that she was giving on inclusive capitalism. Um, but it, but it's, it's, I, I use this quote because you can see uh, you know, at, at the highest level, um, we, we, we are seeing a, a critique of where we are at this moment, we, going through, having been through a recession, hopefully coming out of that recession since, um, since, the, since the credit crunch. And behind that, a huge criticism of values um, or a lack of values in, in certain industry sectors. Um, and as the debate has opened out, um, we found that last year, um, David Cameron, our Prime Minister, has talked about the importance of, of our own national values. You know, what are British values? This opened up a huge conversation at the time because, uh, of course, it is open to debate as to what British values are. Um, I remember that uh, Sky News ran a, a sort of an open, open debate on this and then harvested all of uh, the qualities that people uh, forwarded to them that, that, that in their minds uh, built the, uh, the fabric of, of British culture, the values. But when you look at them, it's kind of a, quite a... A crazy sort of esoteric and uh, a, a wild um, sort of collection of, of values, but uh, but yet they, that many of them will, will, will touch a chord for us. But it, within those qualities, people voted Queen, Tea, Patriotism, uh, Bacon, Cricket, um, Equality, uh, Diversity, uh, Decency. Um, so um, it is often quite difficult to put your finger on exactly what are, what are the values of, of, of a national characteristic. Um, but this, but to, to, this has now um, formed uh, the backbone of, of, of uh, the school's ed education, that uh, it's now going to be a re requirement to, to include values in, in the school curriculum. Um, so values, of course, therefore, are very important. Um, what I would like to um, do now is to think, uh, how are they created? How can you decide what sh which values are important to your particular brand? Um, and, I, uh, and so in this section, we'll be looking at leaders, their personal beliefs, um, company values, uh, the four types of organizational values, and, and how to identify your values. Um, I'm going to ask you a question now. And the question is, um, do your brand values differentiate your brand? So do you think your values actually play an important part in, the, in differentiating your brand from your competitors? Um, so if you strongly agree with that statement, please vote one. Um, if you think that your values at the moment are not a deciding factor and do not help to differentiate your brand, please vote five. And if you're really not too sure at all, then please vote somewhere in the middle, perhaps it's three if you're, if you're undecided. So let's have a look and see um, how th this uh, question is shaping up. Um, do your brand values differentiate your brand? 
Um, and this is, this, is, this is very promising. So uh, the majority of you are just uh, in about, about sort of position two here, which was, gives us um, about 30, oh, no, 16 to 23. Have we got 25%? Uh, it's, it's moving um, as, the, as the, uh, the, the vote increases. It looks as if actually the strongest bulk of, uh, of you are somewhere in the middle, actually. I'm not quite sure whether those values are differentiating you. Um, so um, I, I hope that uh, by the end of today that you will revisit your values and use them to help uh, grow strength in your brand. Um, so as we turn now to the presentation, um, I would like to begin um, with, a, with a quote by, by Richard Barrett, uh, who is uh, a strong voice in, in the world of, of, of uh, values development. Um, and he says that leaders build trust when they live authentically in alignment with their most deeply held human values. If you want to succeed in the 21st century, you will need to become a values-driven leader. So there's no escape. You know, if, if you're an entrepreneur, a, a, an owner of a business, um, if, you, if you're a director in a company, you have to be accountable. And you know, there's a higher expectation than ever before that you, you live the brand, you, that the values are an exten extension of your own personal beliefs. And so this is so important. And so as we look at some of the world's, world's biggest brands, you know, uh, uh, um, and we see the, 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 the personalities behind them that resonate the most with us, it's often because they are, their, their actual personal qualities, their, the values that they believe in, a strong part of the development of the brand that they've created. Um, so um, what you need to do really is to assess your current values. Um, and, and you may not have been through this process before, so it would be worth interviewing your, your management team and interviewing every level within the organization to find out what everybody feels are the values that the brand is all about. Um, you need to choose a team uh, to sort of to manage all of this information. Um, you need then to start to whittle down those, those values and define, define what behaviors will be attributed to those values. Um, create a draft document about them and, and then share it with, with your team um, and be prepared to make revisions before you publish it and then, and then implement this. But be, be aware that there are different levels of, of values. Um, and one, one way of looking at this is the model that, that Patrick Lencioni uh, created in his book, The Advantage. He breaks them down in terms of core values, accidental values, aspirational values, and permission to play values. Um, so the core values are the ones that you know, are immutable. They are the ones that you totally believe in, are, are, are totally unchangeable. Aspirational values can be those values that you need to acquire or work towards in order to, in order to perhaps reposition the brand or take the brand to, into a new area. Um, the permission to play values, I call these values like trust, you know, integrity. You know, there's sorts of values that a lot of people have on their, on their values sheet, but in truth are the sorts of values that every organization must have. Um, you know, there's, there's no escaping them, and so they're not really the sort of values that are going to give personality to, to the brand. And the accidental values, well, you know, those are those often the uncomfortable truths. You know, have you ever looked around your team and found that actually everybody's the same age as you, everybody looks the same, everybody has the same accent, um, everybody goes to the same place on holiday? Those are often the accidental values that can come uh, with a, with a fast-growing, small, new business um, as it attracts people that uh, share the same lifestyle. So they can be uh, accidental values that aren't often identified but are immediately obvious to, to somebody um, from outside of the organization. So, so be aware of the, of the different types of values and use this as a way of, of uh, concentrating your attention on those values and in, in evaluating them. Um, so uh, considerations for, for, for choosing your brand values. Uh, ask yourself, you know, are these values sincere and memorable and do these values differentiate the brand? Um, these are questions that... Um, you know, I'm asking you today as well as so that you can actually take part in. So the same questions that you are, you are interacting with are the very same questions that I'd like you to ask your team members as well concerning your, your own organization. Um, do the values provoke a measurable behavior that will enhance or transform the brand's performance? Because values, of course, 
uh, are useful in uh, measuring the performance of the organization and as a criteria for selecting new staff and suppliers. Um, are your values relevant to the brand experience? Um, and can employees realistically live up to them? Of course, this is a, an important factor. There's no point in creating a sort of a benchmark that nobody can actually live up to. And so the brand is almost you know, set up to fail from the very beginning. But at the same time, they should be aspirational. So um, in, my, in, in the third section of this presentation, um, I'd like you to think, what, uh, how, well, how am I actually going to go about putting these values in, into place? You know, and how can I put personality into the values if you already have values that you feel are entrenched but they don't actually have any personality? Um, how are you going to, to, to get that quality out of them? Um, assigning behaviors to those values so that they have realistic outcomes that drive the culture and the performance of the organization. Um, and you know, do they fulfill body, mind, heart, and soul? Um, and who are the role models that best, best display these qualities? So I'd like to ask you another question here. Do your brand values provoke measurable behaviors that will enhance or transform the brand's performance? So are your values measurable? You know, is there any way of actually gauging whether those values are being lived up to or, or put into action? So um, if you agree, think that they are strongly, um, please vote one. If you uh, strongly disagree with that statement, please vote five. And if you're undecided, um, please vote so somewhere in the middle. So um, let's see. I'll give you uh, an opportunity to, to make that vote. And uh, I will now move over to the survey and see how those, uh, those, your, your decisions are coming through. So um, it's, a, it's, an imp it's an important question. Of course, you know, we want to... Um, be able to have actual results as a, as a, as a, a resultant of doing all of this. Um, there's no point going to all of this if they're, if they're just something nice to have in the back of your annual report or on your website, uh, but actually nobody is, is doing it or living their life according to them. So are, they, are your values providing measurable behaviors? So again, we're somewhere in the middle. And I think this is, this is actually very helpful because for me it means this is exactly why we're, we're running this webinar. You know, we want to, I feel there is confusion about values at the moment. Um, I, I think it, it's, it's something that we can't really escape. It's certainly in the news and the media consistently. And I'm sure after this webinar you'll probably start to hear the word in, in, in every other conversation in news stories as, as values are seen as you know, a, a massive aspect in the performance of, of brands. So adding personality to your brands, how, how do we go about this? Um, there is uh, there's some great work, of course, by the um, uh, Carl Jung, um, who, uh, who, again, w went back to the source material of Plato and the, uh, um, the Greek uh, um, dawning of, sort of civilization, um, and, and he evolved the 12 brand archetypes. Now, you may have come across this. Um, it, it is a, a very useful tool. Um, it's a great tool for, for brand consultancies to help get closer to an understanding of the personality of the brand. If you think in the abstract sense, if your company, your organization, your product or service was a real-life person, um, how would they behave in any given situation? And how they behave would be in accordance with their values. And so we have the 12 brand archetypes. Um, and it, it's useful then to reflect, you know, are, are you the magician, the transformer that uh, cr you can create sort of moments of magic? Um, are you the outlaw, the rule breaker? Is, is your brand you know, standing apart from everybody else and, and challenging convention? Are you, are you the jester, the fun maker, you know, a, pleasure, a, a pleasure brand that, uh, that, that, is, that has a lightness of heart to it? Um, is it deeply romantic, the lover? Are you like the regular guy, um, you know, the, an everyman brand, the, or the nurturer, the caregiver, the, the, the homemaker? Um, 
there to as the sort of the bedrock of, of the family, uh, or are you totally leading, you know, dominating your marketplace as, as the ruler, uh, or, or the creator, you know, the craftsman, the skilled artisan? Is that is that the the soul of your brand, um, or the innocent, the optimist, uh, the sage, the expert? Are you are you seen as the the consultants, the expert, the, the got higher experts within your within your sector, um, or the hero, the challenger brand? or the explorer. Now, the, the important thing about these archetypes is that you may be instinctively drawn towards one, which makes it clear that, well, you know, yes, we are experts, so therefore we are the sage. But then there may be a, a not enough personality in that. So you need to look to a second archetype and, and start to rank them um, uh, so to, you know, for clues to where the personality will come through. So you might be the expert, but you might also be the adventurer. So if you think of a, a character like Indiana Jones as an archetype, you know, we know that in his career, you know, he's an expert, you know, he's an archaeologist and a, so a university sort of professor character. But in the story of Indiana Jones, he goes out and has excitement. You know, he goes and it, it uncovers these sort of ancient uh, artifacts and has adventures along the way. So by combining the sage with the explorer, we start to get a, you know, a, a far more exciting proposition with lots of personality in it. So this is sort of exercise that you can run as part of a values workshop to help you get closer to what your, your, the personality that your values will build uh, and how it will look and feel. Um, and, so, and then how do we assign you know, behaviors uh, to, to these values? You know, this is a, a very important area in itself. So, um, I've chosen as an example uh, Jamie Oliver, um, and if you go to his website uh, and the careers section, you, you will find that his values you know, are far from, from dry, um, that, that, with none of the you know, respect and, uh, and honesty. Um, uh, instead, we get keep it simple, uh, give it your all, uh, enjoy yourself, think fresh, spread the love, and grow with us. Of course. We see Jamie Oliver you know, as a very optimistic uh, chef um, who has taken it uh, you know, on, upon himself to improve the nutrition of school dinners and by doing so has increased the offstead of many schools. Um, he's a real crusader. He's gone way beyond the, the kind of um, uh, outline of the typical celebrity chef. He's gone you know, completely off, off of the, uh, the, you know, the, the guideline of what, or, of what we might expect from a celebrity chef and de redefine what it means for him. You know, he, is a, he is somebody who has the strength of his own convictions. Um, and so it's, it's easy to see what Jamie Oliver stands for. Um, um, and when we look at those values, you know, they, they really sort of come to life. Um, you know, and there is an explanation behind each one of these, uh, of these values. So for keep it simple, we have challenge complexity. Things should be easy to use and do. Give it your all. Work hard and enjoy the rewards for a job well done. Um, enjoy yourself. Um, take pleasure in your work and your working relationships. And think fresh. Fresh ideas, fresh approach, great results. Spread the love. The behaviors associated with that are share the good times, help throughout the bad times, and grow with us, the explanation, adapt to change, and grow for the future. So these are values that you can remember. I, I feel if I worked for Jamie Oliver, I wouldn't have a problem recalling these. You know, they would be front of mind. Um, and it's easy for me to understand how to translate them and put them into meaning. And so they're much more personable, and they add more character to, to the brand. Uh, as opposed to those sorts of single words like you know, respect, trust, um, which are, are harder to bring to life and give, give personality to. So if you're in a situation where you're able to go back to your values and reinterpret them, perhaps you could give them a name instead of a one word it, so that you have a better chance of bringing them to life um, and, uh, and helping your colleagues to, to, to live the brand. Um, and create really the biggest marketing team, the biggest sales team that, uh, that an organization could ever have. Um, so, because we feel these behaviors are, are on, on four different levels, yeah. through our body, through our mind, 
through the intellect, you know, through, uh, the, the way that we know that it makes a strong business sense, through the heart, you know, we feel it, uh, it, it through our fiber uh, and through our soul, you know, on a higher purpose, we, we connect with the, the bigger aims of, the, of what the organization stands for. Um, so it, it, it's, uh, it really connects in a sort of holistic way that um, makes complete sense to, to your employees and to your customers, of course. Um, and everybody understands what the brand brand is about. It's important, of course, then to recognize those people that bring your brand to life. It's not just the CEO, the top management level, those, those brand champions. It's the ambassadors, the people in the organization that best live, live the brand. And you want to promote them to, to very visible uh, positions you know, make, uh, and, and celebrate what the, the qualities that uh, they have. So if you think of the Apple brand, for instance, you know, for me, Apple um, is all about creativity. Um, that, that, and that creativity is celebrated at the very top. So you know, uh, uh, we, we've got Sir Jonathan Ive uh, you know, in a very visible position uh, in, at the top level of the organization. Sir Jonathan Ive, of course, the, the British designer behind behind uh, all, all of their sort of groundbreaking uh, popular products. And so he is, you know, by celebrating him and attracting um, a new talent to, to the organization of, of, with high creative credentials, um, it makes very clear to the outside world that that brand stands for something and it's championing those, those qualities at, at the highest level throughout the organization. So look around you and see, well, who, who is best um, bringing the brand to life and, uh, and living the qualities of the brand and celebrate them you know, and make them, very, make them visible, reward that, reward that hard work so that they act as a, a beacon uh, to, to their colleagues and to the outside world as to what that brand really means. Um, so, um, in, the, in this uh, sort of cl closing section of, of the presentation, um, I would like you um, to think about how, how we sustain our values. Um, how, do, how do we communicate them to the outside world? Uh, how, do we, how do we actually go about living them through our touch points and brand experience? And can we recruit on them? Um, and how, indeed, do they uh, support the brand in the long term? Um, so, I have a, another question for you. Are your brand values relevant to your brand experience? So are the values and the behaviors actually relevant to the experience itself? Are they a very experience of the brand? Um, are they driving the experience of the brand? So um, I'll give you a little moment to, uh, to vote on this. And uh, so I'll move over to the survey results. And hopefully those, those have, um, results will be coming in. So waiting for that uh, to load. Um, I, I, of course, you know, all of this is, is absolutely fundamental. If, it, if, it's not, if, it, if the values are not supporting the brand experience, if they're not connected to it, um, you know, what, why, what, what was the criteria for choosing them? Um, and this is good. We're getting stronger, actually, in the strongly agree uh, area here, which is good, um, but still very much in the... Um, we've got a, a sort of 30... 30 30 sort of percent around the area of, of not, not too sure. So, so hopefully this presentation is going to help influence your, your thoughts about um, the, the, the importance of your values. And maybe your values need to be toughened up or, or more clearly so that the rest of the team understand what they're about. How, how do we communicate our values? Um, there's, a, there's a fantastic book, The Seven Basic Plots, Why We Tell Stories by Christopher Book. Um, I, I recommend you, you seek out that, that book. Um, and in, in it, he, he identifies what you know, are seen as the seven fundamental plots behind all the great works of literature, all the stories that we tell. Overcoming the Monster, Rags to Riches, The Quest, Voyage and Return, Comedy, Tragedy and Rebirth. And these, these plots you know, are great narrative devices that you can use to bring your values to life. So if you have your, uh, your set of values, and I recommend that really you shouldn't have more than five, and this, the problem can be that you know, more than five values becomes much harder to, to remember uh, and put into, into action. Um, and perhaps then start to tell stories about those values, you know, what those values mean so they come to life. 
And this could be then used in an induction as part of internal communications. And of course, it can also be used for, for part of your, your marketing campaigns. These stories can be used as narrative devices that make it clear to the outside world the qualities that you champion and you feel are most important to the brand. And we, we've seen brands you know, that are, are, are becoming ever more sort of ethically driven but with a conscience and so, uh, with, a, with a feel of being citizens and understanding their place in, in making the world a, a better place to live in. Uh, so um, you, you can probably see some, some opportunities here, but sometimes it's about turning things on their head. You know, uh, does, does, a, does a charity, for instance, have to ch tell the story of tragedy to attract an audience? C could, a, could a charity actually tell that story through comedy? Um, and there's a wonderful uh, short film um, uh, called uh, Follow the Frog on the, the Rainforest um, uh, brand, uh, which you've probably seen on, on, on many coffee labels and you might look out for um, if, if, uh, you know, if, if, you have a con if you're interested in those sorts of uh, affairs. Um, but it tells a lovely story using comedy to, um, to uh, help us sort of laugh at ourselves but become more connected with the idea of what, what that charity uh, and what, the, what that um, organization stands for rather than terrorizing or, or, or almost, almost sort of emotionally um, um, uh, blackmailing us through, through a tragedy story. So perhaps there's an opportunity for you to find a different storytelling technique to connect with your, your audience um, and tell an engaging story about the brand. Um, we want to live the values, and I think um, London 2012 um, isn't too distant in our memories. I, I, I hope um, many of you had the opportunity to go to, to London 2012. I was very fortunate to, to go there, and of course, like many people, I'm sure you know, we were all um, bowled over by the, uh, the behavior of the games makers. Um, and if you think in such a relatively short space of time, for a group of people who were voluntary workers and uh, yeah, working um, a long hours, really made the games you know Jacques Rogg uh, in his closing speech actually paid mention to to the games makers uh, and made special point of the fact that it was quite unusual you know and that these people have played a, you know, a huge impact in in the success of the games and uh, making it a to totally enjoyable experience navigating our way to to the site of the games and back again through through London and so, you know, they're really sort of a, an icon, a beacon of what, of what can be possible. You know, if you think of your organization, do you, do you have a collective name for your, for your colleagues? Do you, are, are you all known as uh, under a certain name? Um, looking at the Sunday Times best companies to work for, um, it's often a common thread that some of those companies that get celebrated have a sort of a fond, almost pet name for, for their colleagues. Um, I know at Nando's, their, their colleagues are called Nandokas. Um, at IBM, you know, IBMers. Um, and uh, at, at Nike, they're, they're the top team. You know, they're, they're, they're sort of crack brand uh, specialists are, are known as Ekins, which is Nike spelt backwards. So, um, you know, the, the, we, can, we can live those values and create fine, fine brand ambassadors who, who uh, really represent the, the, the better qualities of the brand and make it a, a more strongly differentiated, put a kind of uh, a, a barrier to competition, creating a kind of a special quality that other, other brands would find harder to emulate. Um, so, of course, we can use our values for the purpose of attracting people to, to, to work with us. You know, are you recruiting on values? Um, we should be using our values uh, framework to uh, appoint people to key positions, uh, department by department. Um, you should start a recruiting team or work with your HR team to talk to them about, you know, we can, if we're going to build this brand and make it stronger, then we need everybody in the organization to be um, uh, you know, the, the best exponent of of, of, the, of the qualities that make this brand. And so we need a team that's able to understand those qualities, interpret them, and spot them in potential candidates so that you hire the best people, the best talent, that are most predisposed to, to bring the brand to life. Um, and so identify those brand qualities of every role. Look at every, role by role, right across an organization, every position, from junior roles right through to, to, to management roles. 
and, and identify where the where the brand personality is living within within the role, um, and so that uh, recruiters are, are more able to spot those qualities and build a you know, a, a strongly engaged team. Um, develop some rules for hiring um, and make it clear to everybody why you are doing this and what you're aiming to achieve. I think you know, this is one of the most uh, important areas of, of, of building a brand that we have. A complete understanding for why we're doing this so that you don't build any mistrust. There's nothing worse than working in an organization, you know, feeling that a lot of changes are happening, but you don't completely understand why they're happening and you can't quite see your place within, within those changes. So communication is paramount so that we attract the right, the right people to the brand and that everybody in the organization knows what qualities they are expected to live up to. And it's, it's very empowering. As an individual, as an employee, if you understand those values, when you have your, your um, performance uh, review, um, you, can, you can state, I have lived up to these values, and you'll know instinctively you know, which values and which qualities you, you have best um, m measured up to um, and why, you know, why, why you, uh, that should be recognized. Uh, so um, they, it, it's a two-way two street. Um, you know, values help us also to whittle down the list of candidates. You know, if you are fortunate to have you know, a huge um, a attraction um, and a, a, a sort of a wealth of people applying for positions within your organization desperate to work for you, then the values can be used as, an, uh, as a criteria to, to um, f find the best, most best suited to, uh, candidates for the role. So um, how do these values ultimately support the brand? Well, you know, they are going to give personality to the organization. Uh, they define us. Um, uh, they are linked to, to the traits of, of the personality of the brand. Um, they provide instinctive guidance, that, that moral compass. Clearly defined set of values provide natural guidelines to, to grow the brand. Um, they connect with our emotions. You know, in, both employees and consumers are attracted to brands that they relate to. Um, and which confirm their own beliefs and identity. Um, so, uh, and doing the right thing, instinctively doing the right thing in any given situation. When values are beliefs that people that give people a moral conviction in their behaviour, uh, there have been you know a, a lot of news stories recently where. Um, you know, people at every level in an organization have made the wrong decision and, and it's created a sort of a conflict or an issue that has been brought to the attention of the media and has grown into a huge story. You know, and, this sort of, and quite often at the backbone of it all is a kind of a, a, a crisis within values. And if those organizations are more capable of explaining what is expected and do more, more training and create more opportunities to, to um, explain what those values are about, um, then we, we reduce the uh, likelihood that we have these, um, these moments where brands have a spectacular fall from grace, where the, the behavior of the organizational behavior of individuals is at, at, uh, at loggerheads with what the perception of the brand is um, and may have disastrous consequences for the brand and, and take it, you know, uh, almost uh, reposition the brand overnight. So, you know, values are absolutely essential, um, very important. Um, so uh, I would like to ask you uh, one more question. Um, can, you, can employees realistically live up to your brand's values? So at the moment, the values that your organization has in place, um, how do you feel that you can realistically uh, live up to them? Do you strongly agree that they are livable to, or would you strongly disagree, or are you some, somewhere in the middle? So um, I'll give you a moment to, to have a look at that and uh, vote. And I will um, now have a look at the survey to see how the results are coming in. And uh, as the results refresh, that's, that's encouraging, actually. We have a good, a good percentage of you have voted that, yes, you can live up to the values. And, and uh, um, in fairness, the majority of you are somewhere in the middle. But at least there's a sort of a, sort of a growing swell of, of you that are, uh, feel that they are, uh, it is possible to live up to them. Um, and of course, this is, this is uh, absolutely important. You know, we don't want to create a, a values framework 
that is so um, far reached from reality uh, that right from the very beginning the brand will never have a, an opportunity to live up to, to that, that uh, expectation. Um, and so, and this you know connects us right back to the subject uh, of branding. You know, if you're going through a rebrand, you know, don't don't create an unrealistic identity and and, pro and proclaim to the outside world that you are world leading at the very top. When in truth, that uh, that you know the, the the culture hasn't got the right values and ethical framework in order to support those statements. We need to get the values and the ethics right, encourage the behavior t to build a very strong culture that delivers the performance that makes this possible. So you know, values really are a, a, an exciting, fundamental part of the, the branding process. It's not about the external veneer. You know, that, 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 that veneer really needs to reflect what's happening in the heart and soul of the brand. Um, so um, I, I would like to, to thank you all for voting on, the, on these five questions that, uh, that we've, um, and, and uh, allowing me to share your answers with you all. Um, hopefully um, in uh, this, this uh, presentation, I've given you a good opportunity to introduce yourself to the topic, hopefully given you some ideas and uh, opportunities to reflect on your own brand. Um, and uh, I, I would la now like to um, s uh, take the opportunity to let uh, you ask me some questions and, uh, um, and, uh, and hand, hand back to um, the, the CIM. So, so thank you. Hi. Thank you, Paul. Um, we've been receiving a number of questions through the webinar, um, so we've had some quite good interaction going on as you've been talking, people getting really interested in some of the topics. So I'd like to put a few of those to you now. Uh, kicking off, I think, with, a, with a, a one that a lot of marketers find quite a sticky issue. Uh, I'd, I'd summarize it as demonstrating return on investment, I guess. Um, uh, the questioner is handling the rebranding following um, a parent company divesting its holding in the smaller unit they're a part of. Um, and management are starting to think that the rebrand budget looks a bit high. Um, and, and the question is, how can you convince them in that situation of the value that a new brand identity can bring? Right. Yeah, it's it's amazing how emotive uh, that uh, change is. Um, it, it's amazing how often you know, the, the media will seize upon the price of of a rebrand program, um, and it will, and then everything will be hinged on on the logo, as it were, or or a change of colour. I and mean, often, what is what isn't um, uh, uh, communicated in those sorts of news stories is the fact that. Uh, it, it, it's, there's a lot of work that goes on in understanding the culture of the organization. And if a real change is going to be possible, it, that catalyst for change is going to have to come through the values and that sharing and understanding of what it means to be part of the organization. And that's going to take a lot of work. And, and I think an important part of this is also recognizing that you know, marketers uh, and brand managers need to work with HR and employer brand managers as we sort of find that meeting place in the middle over the, over the brand, working together collaboratively. Um, and my, my experience has been with, with so many organizations that you know, HR and, and marketing are often quite distant to one another. Quite often, you know, the two teams have their own agenda and uh, quite often, you know, two teams will have different ideas of what the brand is all about, and there's sort of, sort of a dislocation. So obviously, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So, you know, it's difficult to put a, uh, to explain any one particular budget without seeing, you know, the costs involved. But there is a lot of work involved, and I think working in branding, um, you know, oft, so often um, all the all the emotion and vitriol and all the all the sort of the, the stories and news that flare up around the, the cost of a rebrand always seem to focus on the visual identity. But the visual identity will have no meaning if it's not supported by, by a real experience. And that experience comes from the mood, the, the, the way that people feel, the, the strength of the culture behind it all. Otherwise, you know, that, that, um, that carefully crafted identity will be reflected as an, as an image that doesn't match up to, to the promise, and that, can, of course, can be catastrophic. And the costs of that, of course, are going to be far, far higher um, in, in damage limitation and trying to rebuild confidence. So it's important to invest in this, your, 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 your most precious asset. 
That, that's really good. Thank, thank you, Paul. And, and actually, yeah, as part of your answer there feeds in quite nicely to the, the next couple of questions uh, that have been asked, which are around aligning values. Um, the first one is, have you got any suggestions for aligning brand values and corporate values when these have been, de been developed separately within the organization? Yeah, I, I, I can't see any real... Um, logic to, separ to, to separating them um, and, I, and I feel that the values must be aligned um, if there is a, any difference it should be that one that there's, there's a call and response uh, quality to them that one makes the other possible um, but if there is a disconnect then it, you know, it suggests that, that there is disconnect um, within the organization so um, there has to be alignment and whoever is responsible for each set of values those two, those two parties need to come together and work together and find what is that, you, what, you, what is you, that, that unites that, that set of values. But, but because those values really, the, I, I really passionately feel there should just be one set of values in the organization and that they, the behaviors that support those values then work for by, by job role, by, by position, by level within the organization, and we interpret them. And this, this is also quite, you know, quite evident in international global organizations where, where you'll have a, you know, a set of values that might have been created in one country and, of course, have to be translated. And you know, something might be lost in the translation, so we have to be really careful. Um, you know, do, we, do we have a global, um, a global brand or do we have localized interpretation of what those values mean? Um, so I, I, I you know, strongly advise that, that the, the person that asked that question and people that, uh, that recognize that, that issue of, of put, being involved in aligning those values and putting together a working group to understand the difference between them, what is the difference, you know, can we align them, can one drive and support the other? So we have unity because the more, otherwise you end up with lots of different layers of different subsets and you end up with a sort of a schizophrenic approach to, to, to the business. And if we, we look at you know, um, Wally Olin's um, and his description of the brand as the, the corporate personality, we don't want that personality to be you know, split and fractured. It needs to be consistent and uh, you know, assertive. Thanks, Paul. Uh, which, which perhaps takes me on to the next one. That discussion about how to uh, how to align the values and so on is: who do you think should be uh, in in charge of that process? Who who is it that um, should be responsible for defining and maintaining the values in an organisation? Yeah, this is a really interesting question because. Yeah, I think there's been a lot of debate on um, on, on the LinkedIn group um, for um, for the CIM, um, and a lot of conversation around marketing today. As in, in many situations, you know, the chief marketing officer has become the chief branding officer. You know, and the word brand has sort of become uh, very popularised. And I've seen it equally within HR, as you know, senior HR directors have become you know, employer brand uh, specialists. So. There's a kind of what, an interesting bridge forming between those two parties. I think you need both teams to really be working strongly together. It is definitely clear that, quite, that they quite often are not, and they're seen as two, two different communities within large organizations. You know, I feel that marketing and HR should be closely situated and certainly have opportunities to be doing more work together. Uh, my, my experience in big organizations, HR have a massive communications budget, and they create a lot of campaigns and a lot of materials for induction packs um, as well that, that uh, all need to be thought through. And both parties have very strong communication skills. So they, they need to be coming from the same place, working together to have unity and message um, and building on each other. You know, we are, we are, we're all brand experts. We're experts in the brand that we work for. And when we go home from work, we share ideas and thoughts about that company. And they rub off on our, our family, our friends, you know, as we socialize. And those people then carry those, those, those little like, seeds, those ideas of the brand with them. And it builds on their perception of the brand. So, you know, we, we all of us are, as employees, are, you know, often forget the influence that we have in the outside, the, the world's perception of, of, the, of the brand. 
and those ideas of course you know can spread very easily and very quickly now through through social media so it's absolutely important that that ever, that the that the employee experience is as as strongly differentiated as the customer experience and that they support each other okay thank you paul and we've only got about uh, one and a half minutes left so so perhaps just one quick group of questions which i'll try and just run together which are around archetypes which created a, a load of interest from people um think of jamie oliver is he a champion hero or is he an explorer? And that's the key thing there. So can a brand be more than one archetype? Yeah. And can you have too many? Yeah, no. Well, I, I think you, you, can't, you, can't have, you shouldn't have too, too many, but there will be qualities coming through. I mean, I think the, 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 the answer to that is, is in the, the popular um, uh, name for, for Jamie Oliver. He's often referred to as the kitchen crusader. So that makes him a hero, um, yeah, and I think he's incredibly brave. Um, you know, he he has tackled governments, he's tackled irate dinner ladies, you know, right across the board. You know, he's he has the strength of his convictions. He knows he knows his own moral compass. So he's the kitchen crusader. You know, he's definitely definitely a hero. But I would say that that we, you know, he's his he wears his heart on his sleeve, um, and you could say that his relationship with his wife and his family it puts through qualities of you know the romantic as well there, uh, you know, there's the uh, and the nurturer uh, too. So there's you know there are lots of other a aspects of the of the archetypes that that are coming through, but um, you know what is it that uh, gives him personality? I, I think it's that that hero archetype. Because um, you know, by by default, you might think that uh, anybody that's in the business of making food would be, be coming from the, the the nurturer archetype. So he's added his personality by be, by being that hero, the cru crusader, on top of it. Um, whereas uh, other other celebrity chefs might have taken the outlaw archetype on top of that. Uh, um, uh, that, that 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 base archetype, and, and, and so they become the bad boy, you know. And we know we know the sort of, we can, we know the the, the 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 sort of people we're talking about here through their behaviour. Yes, so, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, yes, we, indeed we do. Well, thank you, Paul. Um, that's that's really great. Um, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today. We've we've hit the hour, and. Uh, Thank you to everybody for submitting your questions, and sorry we couldn't get around to answering absolutely all of them. There were hundreds, quite literally. Um, and thank you to all who took part in the webinar, therefore. Um, we hope you found the content useful, and we'd love to hear any feedback that you've got. Uh, and a brief survey will appear on your screen shortly, so please can you help us out to, to uh, keep improving our, our product and our position by uh, uh, taking the survey. And just another final reminder that there will be a link to the recording of the webinar emailed to you in the next couple of days, and members will also be able to access that on the Marketing Expert Toolkit within the next couple of days as well. So thank you very much, and goodbye from CIM. Thank you.